Hey everyone, how is everyone doing today? My name is Gina and I am doing great. So are we ready for the final three months? October, November, December. I think y'all are going to enjoy these last three. Have you figured out the mystery theme yet? Um, if you haven't, never fear. I will let you know next week when I post my planner video. Again, these are uh, going to be the months in my planner video, the um, dividers and the cover for my planner. Um, so I hope you will check that video out so you can see how easy it is to create your own planner. And I will be posting these um, paintings on my Facebook group for a freebie. So you're more than welcome to uh, download them and use them. Um, but that will there'll be more information about that next week in the planner video. And uh, they will be posted next week on my uh, Facebook group. So, October, of course, is Halloween, Spookyville, Spooky Time, my favorite month of the year. Um, fall is my favorite season of the year. I just love fall. So, um, my inspiration is Halloween. And uh, you will see the wording here. And uh, so that is why I decided to create a graveyard. The wording is going to say it was a graveyard smash, right? So um, I created a, a graveyard and I'm just sketching out what I want it to look like. Um, and as you see, I really work on the tree a lot more this time than I did in March. And I really like the way that this tree came out. Could it be improved on? Sure, yes, it could be. But in my, you know, I think it looks a lot better than the March tree. So again, practice, you know, you practice and you learn things. Um, and, you know, just creating helps you to learn new things right don't be afraid to fail because you can't learn unless you fail at least once at least that's what I've been told <laughs> so I'm um I want this to be more of like a nighttime scene you know spooky so I wet my paper in um, areas first I don't wet the paper all at one time I want it just to be more controlled the water um, on the paper so I'll do it in small little batches as you can tell and I'm using Payne's gray with a little bit of purple in it to create the background color um, and I really like the way that it came out it came out the the color that I wanted it to be because I didn't want it to be like total nightfall but I wanted it to be kind of like twilight looking and I think it worked pretty well um, then I just darken the color up just a tad bit and go around the tree to kind of um, make the tree stand out more and um, I will just take water and kind of move the paint around on the page. I wanted it to have this kind of double effect if that makes any sense. Um, so. I really like this, the, the way that this came out because I wanted it to look really spooky, right, and eerie. Um, and I also went around the tombstones to do the same thing. Um, I have this stamp that I really, really love. And um, I'm just using a gray color, the archival ink gray color there, and uh, just stamping it. Uh, trying to be careful not to get it onto the tombstones. Um, but I did want it a little bit in on the tree, though. Um, I really like the way that it turned out. It, I think it gave it a little, a lot of extra character and texture. So I really enjoyed the way that that came out. Now for the tombstones, um, what I did was use Payne's gray with a little bit of green. I wanted it to be like a greenish gray color. And um, so that is what I mixed together for the tombstones um, and I purposefully left 
you know, some of the white there for highlights and, you know, spooky. I really loved doing this one because it was just, I wanted it to be really loose and really just like, you know, I wanted it just to be spooky and eerie and old looking. So, um, and again, with the tree, I also used the same color. I just darkened it just a tad bit because uh, I didn't want the tree to be brown. And then for the uh, shadowing work that I did, I just darkened up the color that I've been that I was using. So really, I just used two colors um, on this painting. I used the purple, and then I used this greenish gray color, and that was pretty much all that I did on this one. Um, and I really liked the way that this one came out. Um, what was in my head actually came out on paper. So I was, I was pretty, pretty happy with it. And again, I'm just using um, the darker color to put the, you know, limbs on. Um, I have noticed, though, that in some of my painting, like my boat painting, I was realizing when I was editing that I, you know, used the wrong size brush. <laughs> you know, I get it like in my head to use the smaller brush, but then when I really need to use it for more coloring in, I should switch to a bigger brush. So see, by looking at this, I am learning too, you know. So, you know, I, I never really thought about brushes, you know, I just thought a brush is a brush, but it does make a difference, the sizes that you use, you know, because you do want the smaller ones for when you're doing detail work, like creating the, the limbs and uh, the tree and all that kind of stuff. But then when you're coloring in, you it depend on how big the area is, you want to use a bigger brush, you know. So those are things that I need to keep in mind. Uh, so now I'm just using my gel pen and I'm just creating texture with it. Um, you know, making little squiggles and just trying to spook it up a little bit. And now I'm trying to decide which brush do I really want to use. Do I want purple or do I want this darker gray color that I have? And if I went with the darker color because um, I just thought the purple would be too, um, you know, it would make it too purple and I didn't want it to look purple, if that makes sense. So. And I will use a white gel pen just to mark in the, the lettering like I normally do. Um, so now let's move on to November. And with November, I used uh, a green, um, I believe it was olive green and uh, purple mixture to um, splatter onto a dry the dry piece of paper. And again, the paper I'm using is the Be Creative Be Paper. I really, really love it. Um, so I will splatter and then I will take my water bo bottle and I'll spritz the paint. Um, so it's kind of like an opposite effect of what I've been doing, right? Um, it looks more marbled looking. Um, so then as you saw, I dried it and then I did it again because I wanted it to have more green. It had too much purple in it. So I wanted more green in the background of it. So again, I will spritz it, move it around, take my paper towel to kind of blot up and then dry it. And then I will continue on with creating an olive branch is what I decided to um, create on this one. Uh, Cause you know, in November you think of well, I do. I think of Thanksgiving because, you know, I am from the United States and we celebrate Thanksgiving. And, you know, when I think of that, you know, usually you forgive and stuff. It's like that time of the year where you start forgiving and all that. So an olive branch, of course, you is the saying that you give an olive branch out. Um, 
you know. So, um, but that was the inspiration for this month. And I'm using my size four um, in this drawing or painting rather. Staying with the olive green. With the branch, I think I added just a little bit of a brown to it to um, with the green to get it like a br brownish green color. And then this lettering or the words is if the sun refused to shine and then down at the bottom it will be I will still be loving you. Um, and I use a kneaded eraser to erase the lines because it will not tear up the paper. And because I don't uh, press very hard with my pencil and it's a 3B pencil, it's pretty easy to erase with the kneaded eraser. And then of course use my gel pen and um, to put highlights in and just to, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit. And I use my pretty excellent uh, palette in this. And then I decide to go ahead and splatter um, with the purple and the green. And that will be it for uh, November. And now the final month, December. So again, I'm starting with just my green color, splattering it onto the page, and then I spray the, um, the paint to kind of make it look blurry. Um, but then I don't dry it, and I just continue to put uh, paint on it and kind of move it around. And then I continue to splatter. And then I will um, just go over it's not the whole page that I go over with the paintbrush. It's just the edges and out. And I don't wet it. I'm just using the paint. Okay, and then once it's dried, I take a um, thing of masking tape here and do the outside and inside because I wanted guidelines to know how far out I wanted to have the leaves of my poinsettias to go out because I feel like when I did my poinsettias earlier um, in my 12 Days of Craft Craftmas video, uh, the petals kind of got away from me. So I wanted, um, I wanted a guideline to know how far out to go with them. Um, so I'm just using my flat brush and creating little cute little poinsettias. I will do the red first and then I will make sure that they are dried uh, before I move on to the green. And um, I wanted them to be closer together, the red petals, um, than to have uh, like um, a little bit of area like I did with my other poinsettias that I did. Only because it's in a wreath, you know, and I wanted it to um, be closer together. I just think that it looked better that way. I really like making the poinsettias. They're fun. Now I'll go with my green. And um, I think this is deep hooker green that I'm using. Uh, maybe a combo of 
that in a light green. And I just make five um, leaves on them. I don't do the, the um, like the eight or the seven or, you know, whatever normally you do. Um, only because the wreath is so tiny, I didn't want to, like, overpower it. Power it with a lot of leaves. So, I just thought that this looked cute. And then um, I'm using my Prima pastel colors, the uh, yellow in there to make the um, actual flowers of the poinsettias on there. And uh, I'm mixing up my paint now and um, I believe I'm using um, a few greens together and I'm going to be making like a pine do pine needles around the wreath there and there'll be two colors because you know I start off light and then I'll do a darker color to go over the top of it uh, just to fill it out a little bit better And there I'm putting the darker color. I just probably ended up using a deep hooker green with the color that I had already mixed together, which was probably sap green and olive green, I probably is what I put together there. And again, I'm using a probably a number two um, pointed round brush. Angelica is the name brand. I bought a whole bunch of them off of um, Amazon. They work pretty well. And then um, I'm just adding little berries to the wreath. And um, for some reason I lost some of the footage, but you'll see me write the wording which um, is it's the most wonderful time of the year and then um, I will splatter after I get done with that with the red on the paper and then that'll be pretty much it so I hope that y'all have enjoyed this series I really loved it again be on the lookout for the planner video next week um, and then I will reveal the uh, secret theme the mystery theme which I'm sure y'all have figured out what it is by now and um, I uh, hope I inspired you just to play and have fun all right y'all thanks so much for watching I truly truly appreciate it y'all be good to one another and I'll talk to you later bye